is Mr. McLeod, and this will be a demo on animation timers and anonymous classes. So right now, uh, I have a program in JavaFX that simply adds a circle to the upper left corner. Um, so that's right here. You just make a circle, fill it in with the color, and add it to a group. So what we're planning to do here is do some animation. So if I go to the API for animation timer, let's close this, here we are. Okay, so if you search just Google animation timer JavaFX, you should find this. Um, and you can see that this is an abstract class, um, which means that in order to use this, we need to make a subclass of animation timer, right? So that's what it says here. You need to extend the class. Um, and that means since if you look at here, there's an abstract method called handle. You need to override that method. And that method is the one that's going to uh, get called every frame, which will create the animation right effect. So if every frame meaning every some number of nanoseconds, um, something happens, like the circle moves, then if every frame it moves a little bit, then that'll look like it's being animated. Um, when you've created an instance of an animation timer subclass, you also need to make sure you call start to actually start calling the handle every frame because um, it won't do anything until you call start. Um, and then if you wanted to stop it, you could call stop on the animation timer and it would stop that timer. So let's go back to our code here and let's actually make an animation timer. So um, down here, notice that I am in uh, inside the application class, right? So the application class is everything in here. Um, I am not below that. If I was down below this, this would be um, a, uh, I mean, you could, you could do it here. Um, but what I'm planning to do is make a private inner class, um, which will allow us to access uh, variables inside the application class, uh, the app class easier. So since this animation class is only going to be used inside of app, that makes sense. Um, so we say private to make it a private class. Class my timer. I'm just going to name it my timer, and it needs to extend extends uh, animation timer. Okay. And oops, it already wrote that for me. Okay. So then from here to here. This is the class definition for my timer, which is a private inner class of app, which means you can only access this class, like you can only make instances of it inside of the app class. Okay. Um, which is fine because we're only planning to make one instance of this and, and call it start on it inside the app class. Okay, so the first thing it complains is I didn't import, so let's take care of that. Import the animation timer um, and then it's going to complain that I haven't implemented the method right so remember I have to implement the abstract method uh, handle right so I could do that manually or I could just click add unimplemented methods and it sets it up for me um, so then the handle method takes a uh, parameter now, which is what time it is. And it's a long because this is in nanoseconds. So this is going to be uh, a really big number potentially. Right? Um, so if I were to say system.out.println now, then you'd be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, so my first animation will simply be to print now uh, every frame, okay? And 
it'll almost look like I have a loop because it's going to print so fast because it's just going to call as fast as it can. Um, so to do that, uh, I need to start this timer. So I need to make a new timer. So my timer, I'm going to call it timer equals a new my timer. And then I need to call start on that. And okay, so now if I hit run and open this up a little, you can see that um, it's spamming the uh, output with the time. Okay, those are really big numbers, and the time between is hard to see. Um, that's because it's all in nanoseconds. All right, so what would be more useful? Um, is if I were to uh, slow this down so I could control how fast things happen. So I'm going to make it so that um, it's going to print high every five seconds. So to do that, I need to know when it's been five seconds. Um, so I'm going to make a instance variable up here in the MyTimer class. Uh, that's going to keep track of when the last time I printed high was. So I need to make it a long so that it can store these really big numbers. Um, and I'm going to call it uh, previous time, prev time. And I'm going to initialize it to zero Oops. so that uh, in the very first frame, that means it will think it's. Um, in the very first frame, it will think it has gone from zero to this amount of time, something like that. So immediately it will um, definitely have been five seconds. So it's going to print high right away. Um, if you wanted it to also wait five seconds before printing the first high, um, that would add, you'd have to add a little bit more logic. Um, but I think you guys could um, figure that out if you needed to do that. Um, so I'm going to leave that logic to you. Um, I'm going to just cover this simple case here where just every five seconds it's going to print high starting immediately. So to do that, we just need to keep track of how long it's been since we last did that, um, which is where prev time comes in. So we can say uh, long, because we need to store a big number here, dt, as in like the change in time, uh, is going to be uh, now minus the prev time. So this is going to be the difference between when we last did it and now. So then uh, we can then just check if dt has been long enough. So let's say if we wanted it every five seconds, that would be five times 10 to the ninth because uh, 10 to the ninth, there's 10 to the ninth nanoseconds in each second. Okay, so if it's been that long, then we're going to print high, and we're also going to say, since we are doing this now, then the last time we did it is now, right? So prev time gets set to now. Okay, so if we were to run that, um, let's try that out here. And it says high. Then five seconds later, it says hi. Five seconds later, it says hi again. Um, and there we go. All right. So uh, that was technically animation. However, printing to the screen probably doesn't seem all that uh, impressive yet. So uh, what would be a little nicer would be if we actually had this object here, the circle, moving around. That's more like what you think of for animation. So um, we're still going to do something fairly simple, but we'll just have it every frame. It's going to move down and to the right. Um, and we're going to define a frame as every 15 milliseconds. So uh, right here, this is your key to deciding how fast is this animation going to happen. Um, so if we wanted it to happen every 15 milliseconds, then uh, since 10 to the 9 
is one second, and there's 1,000 milliseconds in every second, then 10 to the sixth would be one millisecond. So if we did it every 15 E6, that would be every 15 milliseconds. Okay, so then um, instead of printing high, what we'd like to do is access this circle and tell it to move. Well, the way that we've written it right here, uh, we cannot access the circle down here because the circle is only defined locally inside this method. So one thing we could do is just declare circle as an instance variable up here. Um, so let's say private circle C and then just initialize it in here. And now see how Eclipse highlights it in blue because now it's an instance variable, which means it's available anywhere in the class, right? Because now the scope is these outer curly braces and that's where it was um, useful that we uh, made this a private inner class. Okay. Now, of course, we could have made a completely separate class even in a different file, just a, uh, and then just had getters and setters for the circle, and of course, then we would be allowed to uh, access the circle. But um, for this purpose, we're just making a private inner class, and the timer is only going to um, access, uh, is just going to access the circle directly uh, since it's in scope. Okay, so that means we can say C dot set center x to a new value. Let's make it C dot get center x plus one. So it moves one frame to the right. And then we just do the same thing again, but for y. And that'll move it down and to the right. Okay, so if we run that, okay, now the circle is moving down into the right every frame. Okay. All right, so we're going to end the video right here, and in the next video, we will continue with uh, how to use anonymous classes.